All right, guys, happy Sunday. Hope you've all had a good weekend so far. Uh, same as usual, we'll just have a look over the uh, the charts, how we finish the week, uh, one by one. Uh, but we'll also go over the new levels for the week. And rather do that all in one go, I'll start on the Euro, um, having a look at last week and then doing this week as well. So here we got the Euro. Uh, a couple of the levels we had marked up to the upside didn't really materialise, but so you know they can they can stay on. Uh, the key level to the downside, uh, which you can see, I've got an arrow marked up here, and and I guess this was saying where you know the buyers would potentially be looking for price to come back for that that next push. You can see just how important uh, as a resistance level it was on the twenty seventh um, uh, of March. So yeah, I guess we're just you know looking at that as a, an important point for an area of support. Um, let me just fix this camera quickly. I don't want it to fall over. Um, so yeah, the buyers could well look to come in. I guess we're we're in a in a bit of a predicament with with the dollar side of things because you know if we if we do have some you know serious risk off, then does the dollar strengthen? But then does that force the Fed's hand and then weaken the dollar? It's a tricky one, isn't it? Right now, so trade what you see, not necessarily what you think. But below one eleven eighty nine, the the previous high, twenty seventh of March, the breakthrough area that we saw in the third. Then I would expect to see a bit of uh, a downside come into this market and almost be looking at, uh, you know, below here, looking for price to drift back down to what you would expect would be a very solid level of support. And given the grand scheme of things, with the Fed likely to be dovish for a long time and throw everything at the economy to boost the economy, sorry, that that could be a level to to get in for the longs. Um, to well, how we finish the week. The fact that we just finished before my zone here, or below the zone here, you would say is is bearish going into the week. But obviously, we're, we're quite close to that next level. So it works on the on the on the on the flip side for the longs. If we can get back above this area here, then you know the the bears have you know given up on this area, and the bulls can come back in, and, and we can then look to to push to the upside. We we'll just remove some of these these lines, and really just sort of marking it up again now as a, as a zone around this point. Here, um, haven't had a close above this level, which is interesting. The, the 5th of June high, so that would be something I, I would would look to have on. Let me just re remove, I have to leave that on there. But yeah, so bullish on the circle, if we can get back up and then really target in that rectangular area before these previous levels come in. If we can drift below here, just be aware of these previous highs, which could of course all act as areas of support uh, as we, we come back through. Uh, but overall, not the biggest move, it has to be said, last week in, in terms of direction. Yeah, we, we pushed high and came down, and, and that looks a lot, but not too far away from where we really opened. Um, but yeah, bearish initial start, I would expect, on, on, on Sunday, <laughs> this evening, uh, on the open. But maybe back down towards this area, uh, and then it's decision time. But yeah, we'll see. There's plenty of twists and turns to come, I am sure of that. Moving over to the pound, um, where we hit our, what day was that on the 10th? Yeah, so we hit the next target level we had marked up, circled here. Uh, and, and just, you know, for the record, I haven't even looked at the, the remaining charts yet. You know, I've literally just opened up the, the things. So we're doing this one by one. I'm sure there'll be some areas I've missed and, and gone through, but it's a good sort of learning lesson for for myself to go through as well. Um, below the 200 day moving average, Thursday, Friday. Uh, but yeah, what a great level for people to book profit. I mean, technically, you know, whenever you, we, we find a, a top or a bottom, hindsight tells you it was a good level. But yeah, you can see why people would have got out here. It was the, the sort of support point for this major move lower. Good uh, turning point for that. Um, areas of support on Friday that came in. Uh, obviously, the this uh, this previous high from the eighth significant. I would also just now remove a couple of these lines. Certainly not to the upside. They don't need changing. The the high that we had on Friday, you can see, was a really strong level here. Quite a few markets actually broke Thursday, came back to retest on Friday some previous levels, and really was some great trades. So to the, uh, I would say we we can be bullish. On the the pound, if we get back above one twenty six forty nine, bears in control at the moment. Um, if we are to have risk off, which potentially the weekend markets are uh, suggesting, then I would imagine the pound comes under a bit of pressure and 
Um, maybe against the dollar isn't the right one to play, but maybe uh, other pairs it, it might make a bit more sense. However, below 124.67, uh, just be aware because then we'll be looking to come to this trend line where a bigger move could absolutely take place. Are we just getting squeezed in? We'll have to wait and see. But yeah, the pound relatively well respected on technical levels last week, to be honest, and as, as Euro was. The Aussie, um, interestingly, couldn't get above our 31st of December high. Had a, a few goes at doing that and, and couldn't. I was lucky it didn't go above that because I didn't even mark up the levels. But you can see here, you would you would have gone sort of July 19 and, and then April 19 as well um, if you wanted to. Let's just remove this one on here. Just be aware of, you know, again, like the Euro, no close above this area. And obviously it's now a zone up at these highs. Um, this was a good example of what I was just talking about on the pound. Breaks a, a low on Thursday, comes back on Friday to test it. And that's obviously offered a, a good level of resistance. As if we are to risk on any week, any part of this week and push higher, just be aware of, you know, these previous lows that are marked up on the daily. While slightly choppy Thursday, Friday they're going to hold significance there as well. Um, the way we finished on on Friday you would you would suggest it is a bit it's a bit tricky to really call. Cool. Um, I would you know wait be late to the party above 69.31 then I would be looking to buy and, and target those highs again. If we get uh, below 68.53 I'd be looking for 67.56 to come back in. 200 day moving average will be key to the downside as will obviously 67.56 but also any areas of support here. If we are to have a very heavy risk off wheat trend line like you saw in the pound is on here in, in the Aussie. Overall I, I think there's more room to the upside in the Aussie just maybe not right yet. Um, the the weekend the weekend uh, market on IG is, is saying uh, at the moment the Dow is almost a percent down. Uh, as our other equity market so this is likely to lead to a gap in futures uh, on the open and you know Aussie euro pound likely to come under a, a touch pressure because of some potential dollar strength from that the your correlation with the Aussie and the S&P has been phenomenal um, so yeah just uh, bear that in mind and have your areas long above short below and uh, or have your fundamental view and, and early trade that when that comes in it would be my advice s and let's have a look. Um, we came up, didn't we? Got above here. Uh, obviously, the Fed on uh, the on the tenth. So, like I was saying last time, I didn't think much would happen, and, and I thought it'd be a short-term high. Um, hindsight says it was, you know, a mix of things, though, isn't it? You know, the the Fed, the second wave, um, as well as you know Trump's handling of. of of what's going on as well not great all adding to it at the same time comes under a bit of pressure and you obviously got US China stuff as well yeah I mean we were due a pullback weren't we interesting you haven't closed below the 200 day moving average um, 29.95 uh, as well look at that another sort of rectangular area I had marks up from last week finds good support you would say the the bulls would want us above 31.14 looking at this and, and that would be that would be an, an opportunity to buy you know late on I mean look you can see the arrow here it looks perfect doesn't it come back down to that and, and push up however you've got to assess the situation really would you have gone long Friday on the close with the, the idea to hold um, for a long period of time probably not probably not um, so if there is a gap it might well be that we end up below the rectangular area here and then you are looking back down to 2900 and then below that the bottom of that range could scare people a bit couldn't it um so yeah let me just remove some of these some of these arrows and get the new levels marked up i would just move this to there here this is what i'm saying you know those support break come back great area of uh, resistance from friday remove 30 39 now even though we did just close Pretty much bank, yeah. Just be aware, thirty, thirty-seven. Um, let's see what else I'd remove. Probably remove thirty-one, fourteen. Now again, it's more of a 
more of a, a zone, isn't it? That I was saying I'd be long there above. I mean, look at this support, support, support. Uh, day after the Fed. See you later. Thirty-one eighty-two. Yeah, got to have that one still. Thirty-two thirteen. Probably just remove a bit again, making this more of a zone on those highs. Uh, and yeah, that's how kind of how I'd have it. Obviously, just be aware if we do push lower, the lows of these days, um, and this twenty-eight eighty-six. A few points either way has been a fantastic zone where people will be saying, "Well, you know, let's get long here or, or short below." So, yeah, Nasdaq. It's uh, Friday at about five o'clock. Was positive on the week. It was insane. You know, the the first day the Dow moved down eighteen hundred, <laughs> Nasdaq was still positive. Uh, on the day, I mean, uh, so we carried on to push high. We hit the ten thousand. Uh, we broke through, uh, broke the lows on Thursday, came back to retest the 9th of June low. That offered a resistance. We came back down to find support on the second, one of the areas we had marked up. Uh, if we push lower, be aware of the trend line uh, and all of these lows in between 14 and 42. A lot of support down at these lows, though, that uh, even with that trend line going, people will potentially be looking to get long. Just to bear in mind, let me just remove a couple of these lines. So I'd still have that. Yeah, I think pretty keep, keep pretty simple like that. Is you know, aren't we just in a in a trending up, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down? Is this now the opportunity to get long again? The weekend market suggests no, uh, but that could be faded very quickly uh, as well. So yeah, wait, wait and see the numbers. Uh, out of Florida, for example, are causing a bit of a bit of panic in the market. I'll leave it to Ant to, to talk over the fundamental viewpoint, but my two pence is Trump's not going to shut down. I know it's not down to him, and the individual states can do it. It will be probably the it'll probably be quite political when it you know Democratic states probably maybe going to shut down. Republicans might not. Then it gets yeah, just another way, another excuse for 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 Trump to blame people with uh, if it hurts the economy you know he said we should have kept open blah 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 um but yeah we'll we'll have to wait and see there um on that i i, I said in a in a, a thread with alex who's one of the uh, the mentors here at Ampfire as well just saying how for me the bigger thing would be if europe you know really starts to to close down again if we have to if we get that second wave because a lot of countries have been praised for how they they've dealt with it most notably Germany so if numbers were to increase there and we shut down and now we've got a big problem because we priced in the second wave and then we unwound that and now we're talking about the second wave when in some parts we're still on the first confusing right um but yeah let's wait and see let's wait and see and let the market tell us what's going on below the trend line you can't be bullish until you hit some of these supports and maybe the news gets a bit better if you were like me you'd look for the longs um, but be happy to be late. I would say above ninety eight eighteen is that area. You know, above here on the close, well, you're looking for it to push up to the well, push on to the, the all time highs. The Dow broke above here. You know, if there wasn't the Fed, what a, what a place to then get long to target this massive area of resistance doesn't happen. Fair, we have a bad Thursday, smash through our, our levels. I'd be looking at this though. I'd be looking at. I mean, this is great area to look to get long bullish price action around here maybe a false break you know would i adjust any of those areas on the dow i mean yes just moving that to that low and make this more of a, a zone as well 200 day moving average probably now just move that to that low here this can be moved up there and obviously marking up these lows one two three four lows of the day of those days around there so you want a big level near the 25,000 handle you've got it right there uh, but this makes a massive area of support underneath underneath uh, 24,769 well I mean we could start pushing down to these lows here and, and then it gets ugly these markets can change very quickly as we know um, I'm not of the position right now where I think it's panic stations be interesting to review this next Sunday because of course that we could have a very quick move lower you know but um, yeah I, I I still think there's there's upside to come but 
weekend suggests downside initially early on. Gold, funny one, with, with everything pushing down the back end of the week, gold wasn't really catching a, a bid. It's contained. I mean, I, I, I would... I wouldn't even move any of these these levels I've got marked on. Just you know, gold broke through uh, our key level, came back to test it perfectly. I guess that would have been the targets. We'd still be bullish above seventeen twenty two, bearish below. We're range bound in gold. To be honest, I, you can't look at that on a daily chart and say otherwise. You can't, and so therefore, the the resistance levels forty six fifty eight, and then the, the higher the year remain. Below, yeah, I mean you've got a, you've got the handle in there, sixteen eighty four, and then you know these lower points as well, which you'd mark on. But yeah, the only worrying thing, of course, is from you know looking at what happened in February was when markets were getting jittery, gold didn't really push on. Are we seeing that two point in that sort of liquidation margin call um, example we saw? We we'll have to wait and see. But yeah, didn't really. Didn't really want to come down, did it? Silver, um, that high technical uh, analysts, um, you know, who went short there are loving life right now. Uh, trend nine, look at that, still holding quite nice. Um, probably have to remove 1781 now, a bit choppy in there. Key zone came up to test, it didn't quite get above it. Uh, and that led to this push Thursday, Friday. Be aware of the trend line, I would say, on silver. So, I mean, to the downside, my levels would stay the same, but I guess if we do push lower, you probably are going to want to start marking up some of these in, in preparation. This holds, and we do see some risk off and gold and silver catch a bid, then, yeah, 18, uh, 19 would be a ceiling to be aware of for, for that. Oil, um, yeah, I mean, it, it, it kind of did what we, we said last Sunday, have a bit of a push on the positive news, and, and that could then... Leads a bit of profit taking of buy the rumor, sell the fact, and 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 that's what's what's happened. Um, interestingly, we didn't close below thirty six twenty nine, um, which for me would have been bearish for the week. You can see these highs here. I mean, maybe I should have had them on last week. In in uh, if I'm being critical, can't remember if I talked about them or not now. But yeah, thirty four ninety three you'd have on making a big stone. Uh, any of these lows, I guess it's marked them up just because we could be looking at a down week. I mean, look at that. It's a lot of support around there, isn't there? I think for a bigger move, just being aware of any potential trend lines in play, probably worth having a look for some. Uh, to the upside, obviously, we're not getting square. Well, I guess you could probably have that one. It's not the best trend line in the world, but something just to consider if we do push and then 41 bucks can come into play uh, having reached 40 44 almost almost that low uh, about 60 cents above the, the high of last week um but yeah uh, below, below below the high of the 26th there's not really a case to be bullish from a technical point of view in my in my view the dax okay well i mean look at that what day did it hit that it's eighth was the eighth last on Monday, yeah, look at what a resistance level. And this is the thing, though, you know, if there wasn't the, the Fed, I, I was generally of the belief that the Fed was the main event, and why would I want to get in an equity position before that? Hindsight tells me it's the right thing to do. Hindsight says for the last few Fed meetings it's been the right thing to do is in hold off. It turns out to be an unbelievable resistance, doesn't it? Look at that. Look at that. Break through this area. Find support on our 28th of May uh, into the close. Got a new range, haven't we? You know, bullish above twelve thousand two five seven, back up to five hundred key level now as well. Below here, then you're looking at at uh, you know eleven and a half thousand, and then the high that we had back on the thirtieth of April. If it is to get ugly, just be aware of of some of these highs back on the the twentieth of May and uh, the low a couple of days later on the twenty second. Uh, as well, but yeah, I'll, uh, I'll wrap it there, guys. So, hope you hope you enjoy that, found it useful. Uh, as usual, any questions, get them in the chat. But I hope you have a, a great trading week ahead, guys, and uh, look forward to catching up with you all next Sunday.